Good evening and welcome to the Fate of Drakenheim. This is the Dungeon Dudes Weekly Dungeons and Dragons 5th Edition Livestream Campaign. My name is Monty Martin, running our game as Dungeon Master. And I'm Kelly McLaughlin, playing Sebastian Crow, the half elf shadow sorcerer. And we're joined today by our good friends Jill the Nidus, playing Veo Senya, the Tabaxi Gloomstalker Ranger Rogue. And Joel Gorman, playing Pluto Jackson, the human battlemaster. Thank you for joining us once again. Uh, we are the Dungeon Dudes, and Kelly and I post new videos every other Tuesday and every Thursday on our YouTube channel, where we cover everything D&D, including advice for players and guides for Dungeon Masters. Check us out at youtube.com slash Dungeon Dudes. You can also join us live on Tuesday nights when we record the campaign on Twitch. You can check us out from 7 p.m. to 10 p.m. Eastern Time at twitch.tv slash dungeon underscore dudes. You can also watch the video episodes of the show on YouTube, which go up on Friday, and check us out as an audio-only podcast as well. And we are very, very pleased to share that uh, we are in the midst of the full-blown playtest for all the new player content in Sebastian Crow's Guide to Drakenheim. If you happen to miss out on our Kickstarter campaign when it was running live on the summer, you can get the pre-orders now at drakenheim.com to still get uh, in on uh, this awesome book uh, as it is coming out. Uh, um, we, we are in the playtesting phases with our Kickstarter backers uh, now, and of course the original book, Dungeons of Drakenheim, is already available, and so you can get both hard copy and PDF copies over on drakenheim.com. With that, though, let us return to the world of Drakenheim. Drakenheim is no more. The devastation which fell upon that accursed place left a kingdom in ruin. Now, horrors lurking in the haze grow ever more great and terrible, while simmering tensions between rival factions boil over into outright war. The power of monarchs, mages, and priests hangs in the balance. Six unlikely heroes join forces to confront the coming chaos. They shall decide once and for all the fate of Drakenheim. Welcome back to the fate of Drakenheim. When last we left our heroes, Veo, Sebastian, and Paluto were making their preliminary inspections over the Cathedral of St. Fiona, where the Gasconade will be held shortly. This momentous event, which will bring together the leaders of Illyria, Caspia, and Westamar to decide the winner of our Caspian duel between the prospective King Wilhelm and the knights of the leaders of the Silver Order um, is a had the whole city of Liberio on fire. Not literally, but maybe we'll see soon enough. <laughs> Nevertheless, um, in in examining the security measures for the Cathedral of Saint Fiona, our heroes uncovered that there was a breakthrough in the catacombs below. Strange undead creatures prowling the, the catacombs almost like living bombs ready to invade when all of the dignitaries are at the cathedral. Following up on several leads, our heroes have now tr traced the origin of the undead creatures, not to those not to risen dead from the catacombs, but rather the crew of a ship docked in the harbors of Liberio, the ill-fated Finch. Having found the, the crew and the ship originated from Dransmond in Westamar and was now um, harbored uh, out on the water um, waiting to dock in Liberio proper, our heroes set out to explore the ship and find out the origin of this mysterious plot. Arriving and exploring on the ship, our heroes did find some documentation about where the ship had come from and a group of passengers that they had ferried forward. And in the ship's hold, 
a cargo of delirium brought from uh, from Westamar into Liberio. Veo, Sebastian, and Pluto had descended down into the hold of the ill-fated Finch. This is a large galleon ship with three masts, one that could haul cargo all the way down the coast, uh, coming basically basically across the 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 um, for the voyage from Dransmond to Liberio is not necessarily a direct path. Um, but one of the things that our, our heroes discovered is that this uh, recent events and the wars between our uh, nations have made this what would normally be a longer ship route that would be easier to tra travel by land uh, quite a lucrative uh, trade run. The, the ship having opened, uh, you are now in the belly of the ill-fated finch. The ship's hold is a massive warehouse-like like chamber that comprises almost the entire bottom deck of the vessel. There are crates, barrels, boxes, and bags stacked up relatively neatly throughout the, the hold of the ship. Um, you have descended down from the upper deck where a large grate can be opened up so that cargo can be hauled out of the ship via a crane. And the hold that you are in comprises both the bottom deck and the, the second to bottom most deck because it's a two leveled, um, it's, it, it's, the ship consists of, the ship's hold consists of two levels where there's kind of a, 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 um, a walkway deck level and then the lower most level so that cargo can be lowered down and spread across all of the, the whole chambers. Um, the only light down here, having roped down from the uh, from the hatch, um, the only light is the light the natural light coming in from the sun above, that uh, shimmer that shimmers down and illuminates uh, uh, with long shadows the the lower decks of the the ship itself. Um, there are two sets of stairs that connect the warehouse levels. Uh, so you can get from where you're standing back up to the upper level and then, but the, the, you can kind of looking down the halls through with your dark vision there, there's not a direct way that you can see immediately that, that goes back up to the upper decks of the ship and then back out on top. You'd probably have to go back further past some of where the stacked cargo is maybe to find how you get back up to the top. Um, and so, Paluto, you were had landed. You you had come down to the hold level first, and uh, followed by Veo and Sebastian. As you were lowering yourself down the rope, you saw a slithering pseudopod beginning to wrap its way around Paluto's leg. Paluto, look out! I will have you all roll for initiative. Said who? What do we got? Veo? I got an 18. So oh. Veo, what, what do you got? 23. Sebastian? 18. And Pluto? I got a 10. Lovely. Oh. Okay. What, what, what's on my, does anyone else okay. feel? <laughs> Pluto, there's a tentacle. Legs cold? Veo. Suddenly. Is that a tentacle in your pocket? You will be first to act. So I'll just show you really quick here. Um, this is the, the main level that you're on. Um, uh -huh. But if you can see over here, I'll just flash this. Uh, this is the upper level of the hold in terms of its layout. Um, that's not your exact positions for your characters, but that's just if we if we do need them. Um, but uh, uh, you can see the, the two stairs connecting to the to the upper deck and all the all the cargo piled along here. So there's like a hole in the center, essentially. Yes, there's basically like a the, there's a hole in the center and then it goes up one more level to, uh, and then above you is the 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 hatch, the, the the which is a big pair of great grated doors that open up that allow cargo to be lowered down using a crane. Mm. Now, Veo, as you, um, as you look around the room and see the slithering pseudopod that comes out from from one of the pieces of cargo uh, slithering around Paluto's leg. 
Um, you can see that it originates from one of the crates here, but the crate is starting to melt, for lack of a better term. It's losing its form almost like a piece of gelatin um, seeping out, um, and or, or, or wax even. And the where it melts, it is almost merging with the floorboards of the ship itself. And as it begins to melt down, you can see all around you that the boards that form the ship's hull and the floor of the ship that you're standing on, um, they are beginning to crack. So the, the, the spots in the wood grain itself pry apart and crack, and they begin seeping out this thick, almost glue-like substance. Um, and as the wood peels away and the glue seeps out, you can see this purple-red sinuous tissue beneath the peeling wood of the ship's hull. Um, the flesh begins seeping this sticky, disgusting residue that is flowing out of all the cracks on the ship. And you feel what was originally the anchored ship was rocking with the waves. Almost now, the entire ship seems to breathe like the guts of a great beast. What are you going to do? Uh, guys, I think we need to get out of here. <laughs> and I um, start to make my... Whoa, what's going on over here? Uh, oh. Sorry about that. Why that did that, I have no idea. Um, I'm going to start to run towards the stairs because I want to get to that upper... Not the full upper deck, but like the second one up that I can get a better vantage point to see what the heck is going on down here. Okay. As you step onto the staircase the first floorboard gives way beneath your feet no, no. but it's not a crack like like a like as if the stair was snapping no it's like you've just stepped onto a um a soft sticky surface and as you you feel it in on your foot first and the whole staircase begins to collapse into the shape of a disgusting bloated tongue <laughs> is this sort of you're going to be eaten by me <laughs> Pluto, look out a tentacle. Veo, the stairs. <laughs> the tongue. As, as your foot latches onto it, the tongue whips up to wrap around you, getting okay. an 18 to hit. Uh, Yep, for sure. 100%. Okay. So you and are no going to take shields. 18 bludgeoning damage. And the sticky staircase tongue adheres to you. You are grappled and restrained. Good. <laughs> at this moment, you look back up at the hatch of the ship. The hatch of the ship, the metal bars that comprise the crisscrossing grid of the grate that formed the hatch are sliding back apart. And as they slide back apart, they form long, sharp teeth and the shape of the ship's uh the hatch into the ship's hold begins to move like a mouth that extends yawns and snaps shut no no dark now <laughs> is it super dark <laughs> yeah it's pitch black now oh none of this is good oh it's pitch black now yeah uh it it it, it, it is currently dark yes yay but also we're being eaten yeah. by a ship yeah so uh yeah and you are you're currently grappled in in the 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 tongue staircase 
Okay, so, and just to make sure, there's like one level and then two levels, right? And the top level is the mouth. Correct, right? Okay. So, so if we were, if we were to look, uh, look here, I'm gonna, I'm gonna move your token onto the, the tongue. Um, <laughs> you have a tongue? Oh, there, there. And so the upper hold is here, right? Okay. And so you, you would be here, right? And then Paluto is here and like Sebastian's like here. So this, this staircase would connect back to the upper level here, right? And then, but then above you, like right above this, about another 10 feet, that's where the hatch was, which is now a mouth. Okay. And sorry, what's the difference? What's the distance between the upper deck and, or sorry, this deck and the below one? Um, we're we're gonna say about twelve feet per floor. Perfect. Yeah. Okay. What would you like to do? I am gonna use my bonus action to misty step Ooh. out of the grass. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and move up to this floor. <laughs> Okay, so you actually want to move up onto the second floor proper. Okay, yeah. where would you like to land? Essentially, just like where I was thinking of going, just to get a better look of the scene where okay. I'm at. Is this second floor, like as I get up here, is it also like sticky? And... Is it like inside of Monster? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, um, It's very rapidly changing from a woody appearance to that of um, a gullet. And you can see that as it is closing around you, the seeping fluid, you can see there's a drip, uh, there's a drop that comes down from the teeth and it just falls onto the edge of your armor and it sizzles like acid. <laughs> Ooh, okay. Um... Guys, we need. To, I'm gonna reiterate. We need to get out of here. <laughs> and there, I, there, and there's like the distinct. You can. You start to smell the distinct smell of bile, like you know the smell of what comes out of you when you have an empty stomach but you vomit. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh. Oh gosh. Okay. Um. I see the tentacle going towards, starting to wrap around his leg. Yeah. I'm gonna start. I'm gonna take um, some shots. Shoot it! Shoot! Um, and I drill it into see. the floor. Yeah. Uh, okay. Oh! <laughs> That's my one for the night. Okay. Okay. Um, so you so teleporting out of the grip of the the tongue stare you nice. land on, on on the upper deck and fire a shot at the tentacle ra that is about to engulf Pluto, scoring a critical hit okay so and because it's beside <laughs> Pluto, does that mean i get sneak attack I guess? uh yeah 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 oh sweet okay so that's uh quick math um 24, 34. Yeah, yeah. Uh, 40, keep going. Keep going up. <laughs> 40, 20, uh, 50. Right, is that right? Um, How much damage? Seventy-one. No, wait. Uh, Seventy-three. Does Ooh. that make Ooh. sense? Oh, that's a lot of damage. Okay, this is what happens. It's a lot of quick math. <laughs> okay. Oh. You take your first shot at the tentacle that is coming out of um, it, it. It is coming out of this crate here, and there is an audible shriek like the noise that it is like the squeal of a predatory lizard 
when something grabs its tail. And hearing this reptilian shriek, the crate beside Paluto, the floorboards, it's almost like it burst forth in this fleshy foam mucus blob uh, uh, as the as the crate bursts apart and as it bursts apart the this blob of almost like cancerous f- tumors yawns open like an opening flower into a toothy maw that melds into the form of the ship's deck so where the creature begins and the ship ends you don't know um but it's it's enough that there is the massive maw right there (laughs) you found the heart Uh, it yeah, looks what? more like a mouth, Pluto, <laughs> than a heart. But it's a it's a heart that needs love. No, it's a heart that needs to die. <laughs> okay. From too much. Veo, let's smother it. What else would you like to do? And sorry, actually, the math on that was sixty-seven, not seventy-three. Okay. I'm okay. sorry. I was like, I was just redoing it. I was like, I want to make sure I did that mental math correctly. <laughs> um, I have one more shot. <laughs> Crit again. Do it. Do it. Uh, that's a 17 to hit? It does hit. Woo! There is thick, knobbly flesh that protects this, whatever this is, but it is, um, it is large enough that it's easy to hit. Uh... 27 damage. Okay. And I think on my first, I get an extra weapon. Yeah, 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 yeah. So one more. Okay. Is this and the Dread is, Ambusher? Yes. Yes. Dread Ambusher gives me my extra shot on my first attack. Um, But that is a thir- 13. Um, The... It's not enough to penetrate the the knobbly flesh uh, of of the creature, the, and the the arrow um, does not find purchase. There's its mouth, guys! Shoot it! Uh, well, it's the the mouth's turn. Uh oh. Um, and unperturbed by the the shots coming towards it. Am um, I based with it? Like when this thing turned into a big maw, am I just like? Standing at the edge of it now. Yeah. So, so <laughs> okay. Uh, right. Both cool, Sebastian cool, cool, and cool, cool, Pluto, cool. Uh, it's gonna ma- attack both of you with uh, with its uh, bite. Or sorry, with its pseudopods. Um, I get a critical hit against Pluto and a twenty four <laughs> against Sebastian. It might be. Yeah. Hmm. The crit is not a crit, but it definitely hits. Okay. Um, both of you take twelve bludgeoning damage, and. Y- as it wraps around you, the t- pseudopod begins to melt, almost starting to try to merge into your flesh, like it's tr- already starting to like coat you with digestive juices. You are grappled by by it, and you are restrained while you are grappled in this way, and you make ability checks to break out of this grapple with disadvantage. Uh, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Okay. Then, um, both of you can roll the d6 to determine who I'm going to try to eat first. I got a six. I got a five. So it's gonna, it's gonna, it's gonna try to chew on Pluto. <laughs> I will uh, say I'm happy, but I'm happy. It gets, it's okay. It gets a twenty-three to chew on to to chow down on Pluto. Oh, it's eaten me. So, Paluto, that's going to be 16 piercing damage and another 7 acid damage. Ah. Okay, now I do get uh, my sentinel will click because it attacks something other than me. Okay. Um, within 5 feet. So, I hammer down uh, with Ignatius on this 
creepy beast for a 25 to hit. Alrighty. Uh, that is a hit. Uh, Did you roll that with disadvantage? No, I didn't. Because you're restrained. But I would have done it after it hit. Um, okay, we... okay, sure, sure. Is that okay? It kind of went for you both simultaneously. So okay, I'll, I'll, I'll roll it. Okay, yeah. okay, okay. Let's see if I can do better than a... Ooh, okay, 20. Okay, still hits. Yes. Um, not great damage, though. Uh, 22. 22? Um, 22 damage. Okay. It's... So as it as it's biting me, I as it's, like, picking me up, I'm, like, stabbing it with, uh, with Ignatius. Okay. As it, as it does so, as you stab down with Ignatius, you see all around you in the ship as the ship begins to form more like a stomach eyes begin to bubble up from the surface of the flesh of the ship dozens and dozens of orange glowing eyes forming inside the ship looking at you as the eyes open so do scores of tiny mouths the mouths begin gurgling and yammering and burbling and then another massive mouth opens up over here and as the mouth opens up you hear this retching noise as it vomits forth a spew of acid both of you can make dexterity saving throws. So ability checks are a disadvantage? To escape the grapple. Oh, oh. Oh, that's awful. And this is on the bottom floor. Yes, this is on the bottom floor. I'm just here. I'm like, what is that sound? Uh, the 10. Okay, 10 for Sebastian. Yeah. Um, I use Lucky to get a 20. Okay, so Pluto, you uh, succeed. Pluto, you take you only take thirteen acid damage. Sebastian, you take twenty seven, and you're blinded. Uh, is this an area of an is this an area of effect yeah, attack? Yeah. Then I use my shield master and I block it. You cannot because you already used your reaction. I can't. <laughs> I can't. So within a second, Sebastian is lifted off the floor by a tentacle and then has a he's turned to face the other mouth, which then <laughs> spews acid into his eyes. Yeah, it's a good day. Okay. You okay, Sebastian? <laughs> no! All right. I, I can't see. What's, what's happening? What do I attack? You have a big tentacle around you, and you're going to be eaten by a mouth. <laughs> you're inside. You're Is inside. it the good kind of tentacle or the bad kind as I'm being flailed around? <laughs> and the per wouldn't the pertinent response be, there's a good kind? <laughs> uh, um... <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I am a shadow sorcerer. I've seen yeah. uh, some pretty helpful tentacles in my day. Uh, okay. Don't don't get too into that. Never mind. <laughs> You've been around wrath before. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You, yeah there's just <laughs> tentacles are neutral in your books. <laughs> okay. That's why Sebastian has to ask. Well, Sebastian, it is your turn. <laughs> um, uh, as Sebastian's being flailed around, acid in his eyes. Um. Uh, okay. If I'm blind, I can't cast any spell that relies on sight. How do I unblind myself? You're blinded and you're also restrained and grappled. Yeah, this is a terrible situation to be in. I, I had like... Hold on, hold on. So we're both grappled and restrained. Yeah. I had, I had a plan A, B, and C for my turn, and all of them have been undone by this, by this moment. Um Oh man. Yeah, the blinding the blinding's getting to me. 
point you choose within range. Oh. Oh, by the way, Monty, um, because we were restrained, technically my deck save was with disadvantage. Oh, that's unfortunate for you. Um, did you see what did you get then? So I got a nine. <laughs> okay, so take another thirteen damage, and you're blinded too. No. Thanks for being I honest. I need to be fair. I just realized I was like, wait, I'm supposed to do that with disadvantage. I appreciate oh, your honesty. Take more damage. <laughs> <laughs> my eyes too. My eyes too. It got in my shield. It got in the armor. Um. So as Sebastian's being flailed around, I just read. Um, Fireball doesn't say that I need to be able to see the point. It just has a point within range that I choose. So, uh, a bright streak flashes from your pointing finger to a point you choose within range. Just just throwing that out there. Uh, Spinning. Crowley is going to fly over and start pecking at the tentacle wrapped around Pluto um, using the help action for Pluto. And I am going to take my staff and be like, Vale, where's the tentacle coming from? And before she even answers, I, I don't wait for an answer. I'm just going to shoot a fireball at actually this one over here. Okay. Um, and How my... That one? <laughs> I, I don't know. I, Sebastian's just like, I don't like this ship. We're burning it down. And I'm just going to use my... Um, my staff of power to do a level five fireball. Okay. As I scream to burn the ship down. And yeah, that's what's going to happen. Yeah, that's uh, that's your turn. Uh, all right. Well, roll the fireball damage and I'll roll my saving throw. Oh. I'm pretty sure I fail. Dexterity save of 18. I got a 17, uh, so that's not going to get me out of that. I wish I could show you this roll because it's garbage, and I'm going to use Empowered Spell. Uh, There are five ones in that roll. Well, well, that's... Roll, roll, re-roll. Oh, that's a little better. All right. That's still a little... I'm whelmed on that roll. Um, that's going to be 30 damage. Okay. So I take the full damage uh, to the mouth, which unfortunately you can't see it. It's glorious. Um, roll I me, just feel Sebastian, fire everywhere. Roll me 3d6. And tell me the results of each individual. Uh, I got a one, a one, and a six. I'm, I don't like these dice tonight. A one, a one, and a six. Okay. All right. Something in the cargo down here was explosive. Oh, no. Good. <laughs> Sebastian's just like, I, I imagine, like, I know it's a fireball, but I imagine he's, like, blind being flailed around and almost like his staff is just spraying fire around as he's like, no! And it just, there's an explosion somewhere. Um, so two things are immediately going to happen. First of all, uh, something exploded. Also, your fireball just blew up the staircase and the part of the railing that Veo was standing on. So oh. Veo, you need to make a dexterity saving throw. Luckily I'm good at those. Oh. Veo, did I hit? As <laughs> 18. Okay, so you so you narrow so you narrowly dodge out of Sebastian's fireball, which basically it blows through the bottom of the ship, and you have to dive out of the way of Sebastian's own fireball. Um, but then 
a chain reaction of explosions starts yes! starting with, with the cargo. That's what we, that's what we live for. Okay. So there's going to be an echo fireball. Sebastian's going to Sebastian. <laughs> sorry, and sorry, not sorry. I'm going to have... And I'm going to say that the spreading debris and flames basically send a massive explosion and flames reaching down the entire ship's deck. I need all of you to make another dexterity saving throw. All of us. Oh, boy. Oh, 21. Nine. 17. <laughs> okay. So, Pluto, um, Pluto, you succeed. Sebastian, you fail. <laughs> So, so, yeah. so, 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 um, and Veo, you succeed. Wow. Okay, so there's 18. So it's 30 damage on a failed save or 15 uh, on a successful one. Oh, wait. Oh, my God. I can, uh, I can, um, what do I have? I have a, a rogue thing. But, um, uncanny dodge? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but or evasion. You have evasion. The, the fire. Um, engulfs a huge area of the ship and it actually destroys that maw. Um, it burns it apart and it starts it, it starts to do to, to um, degrade. Um, I'm gonna send that to the back there. Um, and um, yeah, now the ship's on fire. Uh, <laughs> uh, we got what we came for, right? Like like we're leaving uh, and, and we're burning this thing. And, 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 and there's definitely a hole in the ship. And it's starting to fill with water. <laughs> I guess it's too late for me to ask that question. <laughs> We're, we got what we needed. Is the delirium in the ship going to cause any damage if it goes to the bottom of this uh, area? I mean, yes. there's, there's a lot of delirium on this ship. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> okay. So. Yash me all over again. <laughs> wait, wait. <laughs> <laughs> Are we poisoning the water supply? Near guys, us? guys, we just need to get out of here. We'll call the the um, Amethyst Academy cleanup crew. They'll take care of this. They've got this. It's fine. It's fine. Yeah, there's As literally a, fire a sign. In the back. There's a sign that says no dumping, and they're very, very <laughs> like there's a huge fines that come with it. And we just sunk a ship full of. <laughs> So, so the one that died was the one that was grappling me. The yeah, okay. As Sebastian lands on the deck, he sits up, takes his mug that he pulls out of his bag, takes a sip, and goes, "This is fine." Sebastian's still blinded, so you kind of <laughs> you're grasping for that mug. This, this is fine. As I pour wine that I had in a mug all over myself. Okay, so so Veo, this is the area of the I'm ship that's now on fire. <laughs> did I dodge out of the way? You 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 did, but you're you're still yeah there. We'll, we'll, we'll move, yeah, we'll move you one square over. Okay. Okay. So Veo, as you dodge over, several of the crates up here begin to become ambulatory creatures that sprout their own tongues, teeth, and eyes, bursting out of their original forms. And as they contact the shuddering belly of the ship, which as it burns, you hear the sound that it sounds like a screeching wail that echoes through the ship. And you feel the floorboards beneath your feet they shake as if the cr be, as if the whole floorboards there's like a tremor sense that goes mm -hmm. through the ship and the ma and these hungry mouths lunge towards you i know um and they're both going to attack uh i get a 23 and a 13 the 23 hits okay um the 23 then uh, is going to be um, uh, it is going to be uh, seven bludgeoning damage and you are grabbed again. Oh no! <laughs> yeah, you're, you're just grappled, you're not restrained. Oh, 
Okay. Yeah. And with that, we go to Paluto's turn. Okay, so I'm blinded. Um, this is the question. Can I rub ointment in my eyes to cure the blindness? Uh, does, Do I know this? Does the ointment cure blindness? It, it only says... Um, uh, ceases to be poisoned and is cured of any disease. <laughs> is so my... this won't this won't cure the 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 blindness because the blindness is temporary from the acid. You'll be unblinded at the end of the the creature that blinded you this next turn. Um, but you can rub ointment on yourself to heal yourself. You know, I was only gonna do it for the blindness. <laughs> okay. Um, uh, I I will. I I read the jar. I think I read the jar. I go, it's probably not going to work. And then uh, I'm going to, I don't know. I'm going to start heading over towards where the fire is. Can I feel my way <laughs> towards the fire? Uh, yeah, you can stumble towards the fire. Give me a dexterity saving throw. <laughs> you know I'm going to be. <laughs> Wait, are you blind too? Oh, yeah. Oh, man. I. Why would I know that? I'm uh also blind. <laughs> I get a, I got a one. Uh, so I got a two. Pluto, come towards my voice. I'm standing in front of a huge fire as you wander yeah, right you, past me uh, into it. He, Pluto, you, you, you basically. Have you ever Take like my hand walked into a table? Like you know, <laughs> <laughs> like when you're like really good uh, and you just like, oh, uh, oof. <laughs> yeah. So uh, you, uh, you move half your speed and you fall prone. Oh. <laughs> Wait, so can I make it can I make it fifteen feet? You can make it fifteen feet, yeah. But I'm prone now? Yeah, but you're prone. Okay, um and I can't <laughs> I'm run out of movement so I can't get up. <laughs> and I'm going to Can I attack from prone? You can. Uh I guess you've got like mega disadvantage, which doesn't really matter. So Yeah, yeah you're attacking with disadvantage. <laughs> yeah. This is what Megan disadvantage You should be able to roll three. <laughs> okay, lowest. fine. I'm going to roll three and take the lowest. <laughs> oh, a crit turned into an 18, turned into a one. <laughs> okay, so that's a miss. This is my... Mega disadvantage. Mega disadvantage. Are you just making up mega disadvantage Because mega right disadvantage now? is not a thing. A 15 does hit, though. Okay, would an 18 hit in the... <laughs> Well, in the mega disadvantage scenario, you rolled three dice. So yeah, I can't. I can't so, keep that. Okay. Um, <laughs> so would a mega. fifteen hit? A fifteen does hit. Okay. A fifteen. Um, second attack, another fifteen. Uh, yep. And third attack, uh, an eighteen. Okay. So I'm laying on the floor and I'm just wildly like you know when you're like almost like fishing with something like I'm just wildly swinging it at Yeah, yeah. Um at the moth. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Um Uh, 83 damage. Oh, this thing is grievously wounded, but not destroyed. Uh, as you basically smash Ignatius around the flames into the ship itself, like battering the ship's hull apart with the blade. And then I'm going to second wind and, uh, that's going to be, I'm going to end my turn prone in the fire. Alrighty. <laughs> We're going to move that over to exactly Veo. what I wanted to do. Veo then. Is the ship sinking or are we okay? Oh, oh right now? yeah, the ship is definitely sinking. Yeah, you just blasted a hole in the side of the the, the, the ship. It is sinking for sure. Good, <laughs> good to know. I I like that. I mean, it might last like a, a minute or two, but it's sinking. I mean, a minute or two is a long time in D and D combat terms. Yeah, so we but got we'll time. roll some D sixes and see <laughs> how much. How much it oh no! Um, I think I'm gonna have to misty step again over here. 
Let's see, hold on. Uh, 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 yep. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna make it. I'm like, you can't hold me down! <laughs> and move over I... <laughs> to the side. Uh, <laughs> we can then, only hear you. We don't know what's going on. And I'm gonna... Do I, from my vantage point, do I see the big tentacle guy? Um, from here... Too far uh, over, I don't know about the angle. I feel like, yeah, you got a shot to it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna And you take... ignore cover, so... <laughs> yeah. And I mean, most of the cover's been blown up by... Yeah. Uh... By Sebastian over here. Actually, you know what? I'm just gonna try to take these guys out. So I'll start with this one over here. Um, let's go for it. Um, uh, 19 to hit. It's a hit. Uh, 21 damage. Alrighty. It does survive um, that shot. That is a 24 to hit. Also a hit. And that is another 21 damage. You pop two of the eyes on it, but it still lurches forward. It's not clear whether it's still part of the ship or a separate entity. Like it, it, it merges in with the floorboards itself. Like it is an appendage of the overall thing. And then I just go over and I yell down, you guys ready to get out of here yet? Who said that? <laughs> just let me know. And I like pop back up. Okay. Yes. Is that Veo? <laughs> Veo, are you with us? Are you, are here? you here? I don't feel Take my story. hand. Take my yes, hand. Yes, you just let me know when you're ready. All All right. I'm ready. So, Why would I not be ready? I'm trying to sink the ship. Of course ready. I'm ready. Sebastian, ready. since you're the one that caused all these problems, you can roll me a d6. Thank you. <laughs> I get a six. Okay. Is that good or bad? Or is that how many inches the boat sinks? Or is that uh, how Come good of a job no, I did? No, let him process the The, the <laughs> ship begins to... um, Like... It starts sinking towards the 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 um, the prow of the ship, like the front, right? So, yeah. because that's where you blast it out, and as it does so, a wave of water washes into the ship, um, putting out the fire. Oh. But Sebastian and Pluto, I need a strength saving throw from both of you. Oh, good. I get a 16. I get a seven. Okay, Sebastian, a wave of water pushes you back against this wall. Um, and oh, I gotta just move that over so that I can see. So the wave of water smashes into you, sending you flying across the ship. You take 10 points of bludgeoning damage and land prone. Pluto, you're fine though. Uh, um, and Sebastian, you were right there. As this I, happens, I can't even see. I'm just gone. Sebastian, mm -hmm. the wall behind you turns into a mouth. <laughs> I, I smash against the wall, take the damage. I'm like, ah, oh, I'll just, and I, I like grab the wall for support, and then it it tries to eat me. It's a tentacle. <laughs> <laughs> no, I can't see what's going on. Everything's a mouth. So both of these giant mouths are attacking both of you guys with, with advantage. So Sebastian, uh, I get two attacks on you with advantage, getting a 27 uh, and a 15. Wow. Does uh, I Not understanding what's happening to him, I'm just going to cast shield, which blocks one of those attacks. Um, okay, so you take 12 damage from the first attack and are once again grappled and restrained and prone and blind. And uh, making death saving throws. Okay. Oh no! No! Imagine. And mm -hmm. Pluto, um, I get a 26 to hit you. 
Oh, and yeah. a 26 to hit you. Oh, yeah. That's 24 bludgeoning damage. I'm now imagining that the wave actually knocks Sebastian out against the wall, and then a mouth opens up and a tongue starts wrapping around him and pulling him into the mouth as he's unconscious on the floor. Um, uh, you guys still... aren't blinded anymore, though. Oh, that's great. <laughs> that <was> <laughs> I love that for me. So now I can see all this happening. Wait, um, am I grappled? Uh, yes, you are. Mm. You know, I wasn't prepared for Sebastian to die sinking a ship, but it seems appropriate. No, Am I so, just grappled? It's not your day. All right. Uh, you, you are, you are restrained while you are grappled. So if you break the grapple, you're no longer restrained. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, Sebastian, it is your turn. Oh wait, Sebastian. You gotta yeah. use your shadow sorcerer or con save. <gasps> I forgot about that. <laughs> wow. Uh, strength of the grave, charisma saving throw, DC five plus the damage taken. How much damage did I take? DC seventeen. Oh, yeah. I He's rolled fine. a 17. Yeah. I'm at one hit point. Okay. Yeah. Sebastian. He stands up. Uh, so, but I'm still restrained. Yes, you're at one hit point. You aren't blinded. You are grappled and restrained while you're grappled. And you're Oh, broken. man. I so Sebastian gets knocked out. He comes to and he's being roped into this mouth in the wall, and he just he just sees the situation he's in and goes nope, and casts a uh, thunder step. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And I'm gonna thunder step up to where Veo is. Okay. Uh, I know I might not be able to see it, but just somewhere on that floor uh, that I can see, probably like. Okay. Uh, um, we'll, uh, so yeah, nice. we'll say, like, yeah, you'd be able to see, like, here or here? Yeah. Uh, probably not next to the mimic, so sure. yeah, right right yeah. there. And, um... And I gotta make a con save for my, my, my... Wow, which I fail with a three. Yeah. Yeah, okay, that was a third level spell slot. And that is Thunderstep for 3d10. Yeah, you gotta remember that ability. It, I haven't played Sebastian in so long, it's, it's, yeah, I forget it all the time. Um, that's gonna be 18 damage. Okay. As I nope out of there and Crowley flies to my side and lands on my shoulder. And... I look down and I'm like, Pluto, take my hand. I'm like a floor above you. I don't know how you're going to. You know what? Can I drop prone and reach my hand down to try to help Pluto up if he can like jump and grab it? Uh, Yeah. Yeah, sure. Okay. Yeah. I've got an idea too. Okay. Um, the ship is rapidly filling with water, um, but the other mimics... Uh, they rush towards you, Sebastian. Oh, I'm prone on the ground now. I said it. <laughs> Pluto, take my hand. Wait! The crates are eating me! I get a 13 <laughs> and a 15 to hit. Uh, uh shield! I, I throw my arms up. <laughs> as, okay. As I block. Alright, and Veo, I get a 7 against you. Wow, okay. Uh, those were... Whoop. All right, we now go to Pluto, who is down on uh, on the lower deck. Pluto, um, I'll save you. Pluto, save me. This creature has been hurt, correct? Uh, quite grievously, yes. Okay, I'm going to start just swinging into it with disadvantage. Okay. Try to murder it. Um, ooh, I get like a 31 to hit. With disadvantage? Yeah. You got a 31 to hit with disadvantage. I have a 19 and an 18 with a 13 to hit. 
<laughs> That's how you Pluto. Okay. That's exactly. <laughs> um, 37 damage. Uh, as, as you bring Ignatius down upon the maw, the mouth closes and melts back into the hull of the ship. Um, I'm going to begin my ascent of, um, is there any stairway that is? The, the one right beside you is turned into a tongue, but the other stairway is not a tongue. At the moment. And I rub it. Surprise! It's a tongue now! Damn it! <laughs> <laughs> Uh, <laughs> oh, thank God, a non-tongue stairway for once. No, it's, about it's my a tongue st- now. <laughs> Years later, Pluto would be found in many a house stabbing staircases. Uh, it gets a 20 to hit. It hits. <laughs> uh, you take 12 damage and are uh, stuck by the tongue stair. I begin to attack the stairs. <laughs> Die, stairs. I get a 25. And a 25. Both hit. For, um... <laughs> 24 damage. And... 30 damage. So that actually kills the staircase. Yes! Which collapses. No! If you're not grappled, but there's not a staircase anymore. <laughs> Come on! <laughs> Clunk. Help! <laughs> and, there, and there's Sebastian getting eaten by these crates. With Just come up here. Ah! <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Do I land prone? Uh, yeah, basically. Yeah. Okay, hold on. I used 10 feet of movement. I'm going to use another 5 feet. Is it 5 feet of movement or half my it, movement to get up? It's half your full speed, so it costs 15 feet of movement for you to stand. Okay, so I have 5 feet left yeah. of movement. Can I try to jump up to the next level? Um, With where Sebastian is above you... I mean, forget about Sebastian. <laughs> I'm I'm just trying to get up to the next me. level. Uh, Yeah, give me an athletics check. Yes. Yeah, I'm not worried about him <laughs> helping me right now. I get a 22. All right, you are able to pull yourself up to this level. Dun, 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 <coughs> but that's dun. all your movement expended. And then um, I'm going to quick toss my javelin of lightning. Okay. At which... So with my bonus action, I'm going to do it to one of the ones that's mauling. <laughs> Sebastian. Okay. Uh, I get a 27 to hit. It's a hit. For uh, 14 damage. Okay. It continues to maul Sebastian despite being javelin. Dang. Oh, this is, this is, I have one hit point. <laughs> Okay. Well, Pluto, that's your turn. So we are over to you, Veo. I have a question. Uh, did we tie our boat up to this boat? Yeah, yeah. And yeah, then we yeah, up. yeah. So Don't worry. Boat, Don't worry. If this boat I say as crates things. are eating. Veo, don't worry. I have an escape plan. <laughs> um. Okay. Um. And the stairs from here... <laughs> Uh, or is it we have to go in the big maw? Um, you you don't quite know the layout of the of the ship, okay? Uh, but you can kind of start guessing from the map that you uh, are looking at that there might be some stairs around somewhere. Um, okay. My other idea, this may or may not work. We'll see. Um, I am going to use my bonus action to. Cunning action, disengage. Okay. From this mimic. I am going to use my action to cast right in front of me. And I say, please, get over here. Uh, rope trick. So from this point, the rope goes up. Okay. Hopefully through the maw. 
Um, and I want to use Okay, so if you wanted to go through, so the rope trick won't go through the ceiling. Is it open here though? Like if I put it in front of me here, is this open above me? So do you see the, see in the in the map? There's a very faint impression in the, uh, in the there. Set. Yes, that those center ten feet are where the hatch was. It's a closed mouth now. Oh, it's closed. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, how are we gonna open this mouth? <laughs> okay, I want to start. I mean, why don't you want to try at the stairs? <laughs> <laughs> I've had bad experiences with stairs. Um, okay, I'll I will try to look for stairs. Um, actually, you know what? I'm just gonna shoot this mimic in front of me. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm just like, uh, shot. <laughs> Kill it. Um, eighteen to hit. Uh, at point blank range, the air, it's basically coming right for you and you're, you're thinking and the mouth just goes, ah, you just shoot it right in the throat. <laughs> uh, 21 damage. That slays it. And I'll turn around and do the same to the one right in front of Sebastian. They got javelin. Okay. Yeah. Oh yeah. Um, that's a 21 to hit. Also a hit. And that nice. one, because it's like. Besides Sebastian, gets the sneaky sneak. The sneaky sneak. Die. 37 damage. Uh, that slays it. Slayed. Both the slain creatures, they begin melting into um, the, the deck's floor. And the floor beneath you is still partially wooden, but you can see it cracking apart and it's starting to warp and bend in other ways. And in some places, little mouths emerge or little little tendrils or an eye opens up that, that veil as you turn around, you step on one of the eyes that pops and there's like this <gasps> kind of sizzle as you step on this orange glowing eye. There's a little bit of teeth coming out and it's very strange. It's almost like you're sinking into it as well. Like it, it's trying to merge with your body or, or digest you. Uh, so Veo, that's your turn. Um, going down to the ground level over here, um, we got uh, we got this big guy. He's gonna come back back up around here, and it cut. <laughs> and so. You guys are above it, so we'll go back to the upper hold. So the maw from below, it moves up, and oh, it's going to try to get grab Sebastian and Veo. Oh. No! Uh, I get a 21 against Veo, uh, and mm. I get a 16 against Sebastian. Uh, is your I'm shield still, still active? Yeah, I'm, is my steel shield still active? It would be. Yes, it would be. Veo, I get a 21 against you. Hits. Okay. Uh, so, Ve you take 12 damage, uh, and the mouth is going to try to pull you uh, over over into it. Give me a uh, strength saving throw. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, okay. Um... 22! Okay, so you, you grab onto <laughs> the railing um, as it starts pulling you in, and as it starts <laughs> pulling you in, uh, the railing starts turning into a, uh, a like a fleshy limb, but you grab hold onto the limb, and the limb is like, "Let go of me!" <laughs> but you're grabbing on, and the mouth, my claws are just like, yeah, digging into you know it. When a cat like around your arm. Yes, exactly. Oh. <laughs> yeah, so it, it's it's trying to pull you down and and, and devour you. Um. <laughs> Uh, Sebastian, it is your turn. Um, all right. There is a mimic and the giant maw. Uh, you know what? Um, I'm just going to go for this mimic that's attacking me. Feo, you're fine, right? <laughs> um, I, I turn around and I see her clinging to the pole. I'm like, Feo, you're fine, right? I have to deal with this crate. And, um, 
I'm going to finger guns the crate and use a uh, firebolt okay. to attack it with Crowley giving me advantage. Uh, that's going to be a uh, 27 to hit for... Oh, wow. That's going to be 23 damage. Okay. Uh, it is very wounded by that, but not destroyed. Oh, no. Yeah, it hasn't taken any damage yet. Uh, um, Sebastian, uh, roll me a d6 again there, bud. Uh, and, wow, this one die. I'm going to keep rolling it, I think. Six. Okay, so the ship is rocking back and forth, but the... Um, and the lower level is starting to flood, but it has not, uh, the ship isn't noticeably starting to sink yet. Um, you know what? I am in a bad situation, so we're going to actually just go ahead and we're going to use Quicken. Okay. Um, I know this is a weird use of Quicken, but I need this thing dead, so I'm going to fire another firebolt at it. Bless you. Go for it. Uh, that's going to be um, 28. That, yep, you got it. And that's going to be 23 damage again. It is destroyed. Nice. Uh, so I, I do the double finger gun. I go pew pew and I blast it. And then I turn and I'm like, Vay, are you ready to get out of here? All right, Paluto, it's your turn. This is uh, this is I have two two part question. So uh, with my battle maneuvers, is this creature um, like climbing up the inside railing, or is it still part of the ship? Uh, it's it's hard to tell exactly where the creature begins and the ship ends like all of the creatures that you you've fought so far when when they when they move it's like their body is extending out of the hull of the ship and and when they've died it's like they've collapsed back into it uh, so where they begin and end is not exactly clear okay so would you let me um use my trip attack to try to get it to fall back into the the ship so it's still it's it has reach so the mouth is basically on the lower level and the 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 tendrils are reaching up to attack veo and and sebastian okay the second part then is can i use uh disarming attack to have it drop one item and that item being uh veo <laughs> Would that count as an item that it's holding? Veo's technically a creature, not an object. Uh, uh, um, but right. I'm going I'm to, sorry, al I'll, 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 to. I'll allow it. Yeah, I'll allow it. Classify you. Um, I, I think in this case, I will allow it. Yes. Yes. I make my heroic dash across and begin attacking the uh, tentacles. Um. Do you jump over my body? <laughs> yeah, I actually run along. <laughs> the the edge i jump over the crate and then i crit this oh, awful nice. creature nice uh, oh man i just remembered i'm invisible i'm <laughs> it's dark in here uh don't don't worry they i these creatures um, i i've counted them as having tremor sense because oh, because okay. like yeah like the nature of the beast That's cool. yeah yeah um, I was with, like, wow. With the distracting strike, uh, 70 damage. Oh! Uh, nice. it, it's still active, though. Uh, so what do I have to do to... Do I just automatically... Uh, strength save. Strength save. Let's see if, if you're going to allow it to... I get a 13. Woo! So it, it lets go of uh, Veo. Nice. <laughs> and I'm going to take another swing at... It. Are its tentacles still in reach? After I uh, attacked um, it, you know, inter uh, uh, interestingly enough, no, it wouldn't really technically be in in your reach anymore. Um, then I'm gonna start throwing javelins. Okay. Uh, I'll uh, 
I'll switch. And I'm gonna throw javelin twice, getting a a 26 and a 17 to hit. Cool, both hit. For some uh, for a total of uh, 24 damage. Alrighty, looks good to me. Uh, hey everybody! So as you as you cut uh, as you use Ignatius to cut the tendril down. You quickly pull two of your javelins and throw them down uh, into into the pit. Um, okay, uh, I think we need to get out of here. The, you know, the ship is sinking fast. Um, we need to get back to the boat. Yes. Uh, okay. The stairs are tongues. Just an FYI, <gasps> I've learned this. I've <laughs> double learned it. I'm pretty confident with it now. I'm not going to need to test it again. So does that mean we need to open them out? Or go up the stairs. <laughs> oh, yeah, the stairs. Perfect. Up the tongues? <laughs> oh, God. Got me again. Vail, Listen, the is, downstairs it, it is were your turn. tongues. What are the chances that the upstairs Every are also time. tongues? Every turn? J- stairs are yeah, tongues. it is yeah. your turn, Vail. Oh, okay. Um, Yeah, I want to navigate to some stairs. Can I figure out? Yeah, you you kind of head back in this in this direction, and you do see that there are sets of stairs leading up and down here, right? Oh, we're da- we're gonna go up. Yeah. Um. So looking over here, this this appears to be the the mess hall of the ship. So what you can actually see is back out here, um, in the in the room down here, the hall has two sets of stairs, both leading up and another set leading down. This is a common room on the ship, uh, perhaps like a mess hall that was used or uh, by by the sailors. Uh, and there are several, uh, um, this level though, there's no windows look, looking mm. out in, in this mess hall because this is like where the water line would slosh up against. So there's no windows here. Um, I will try these stairs because I have, I can do my feline no, actually, I use my bonus action to dash. Okay. I uh, use my cunning action. Well, uh, <laughs> um, the stairs might try you uh, as they collapse oh, back stairs. into a tongue. <laughs> <laughs> we'll never learn. Uh, getting a 16 to hit. <laughs> no. Okay. So the stairs miss. So you have a choice. Do you want to go Ooh. up or down? <gasps> Helping hands. Oh, I so, can actually go. So basically, the tongue didn't hit you. It tried to wrap around your leg, but you're kind of running up the tongue as it's rolling up to try to wrap around you. So oh, you up. could go up or you could jump back down. Up. Okay, so you jump back up um, to the next level of the ship. So you are now on the cabin's level of the ship. Oh. So what you can actually see here is... Um, you, you look out here and behind you are all the ship's cabins, but this is actually leading out onto the main deck of the ship from here. So you guys, I, sorry, I copied your tokens twice. Uh, I will just remove these, uh, um, and remove that. Uh, so this is the top of the, this is the main deck of the ship. And then these are the stairs that would have let, led up to the top deck where you guys came in. And then these are all the cabins behind you on, on the rest of the ship. And how much movement would you say it took me to get up the stairs? Uh, 10 feet of movement to go up the stairs. Okay, so 20. Oh, actually. Um, let's see. Ooh. There we go. Okay. So yeah, that's a, that's a mouth now. That's a mouth. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, I'm gonna yell down the stairs like, guys, the stairs are tongues, but I got up! Uh, and I'll move away just a little bit from the, the tongue. Okay. Um, alrighty. Did she say the stairs are fine to go up? Yeah, I think we should just run up them. Actually, do I have a rope? Let me see. Can I throw a rope down to them? Uh, yeah, but the tongue is still there. Can you guys we... can run up the tongue. How do we? Pluto, hold I'll me. I'll throw you. 
I'll throw you, and then I'll try to jump. So remember how I said that that the the hatch had transformed into a mouth? Oh. Yeah, it transformed into a mouth. Oh. <laughs> is there a wall here? That is there? maybe not. Uh, there is a wall there, but the so the hatch isn't there anymore. It's just now this moving mouth. Oh, um, it like moves around the surface of the beast. Yes, yeah, and it's it, the... it, it's coming for you, Veo. No, no. Uh, and it gets. I didn't run away far enough. Uh, it's gonna get a, get a fourteen and an eighteen to hit. The eighteen hits. All right, twelve bludgeoning damage, and you are grabbed by it. Meanwhile, <laughs> what? zero. You're at zero. No, 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 I just like <laughs> you're this <laughs> on the stairs. <laughs> okay. Meanwhile, on the upper hold level, um, the the this this big one, which is is quite wounded, um, it's gonna it's gonna go for you, Sebastian. Oh man. Uh, uh, so I'm gonna do one against Sebastian, uh, which is a 16 to hit, and one against Paluto, which is 26 to hit. I cast my last shield. All right, Paluto, I got a 26 against you. Um, that absolutely hits. That's 12 damage, and you're grappled, and it's gonna try to pull you in to devour you. No. Um, I get. Uh, do I get my Sentinel proc? Uh, yeah, you would. Yeah, you would. I, and, and I reach in, I, 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 as it grabs me, I just wheel back Ignatius and, um, I roll with this advantage, right? Yeah, technically. Yeah. Okay. I get a 15. That hits. <sighs> like the lowest I can get without... <laughs> without missing um please die please die please just die oh yeah um 35 damage it dies yes As it be, so you don't even need to make your strength save. Basically, it's pulling you in. You see it gra- get Sebastian and uh, go for Sebastian. Sebastian blocks it and it recoils and you slash the tendril and it quivers with, with again, a whale-like shriek and melts back into the hull of the ship. I catch you, but not actually because I'm weak. So, so you, you kind of just fall to the you floor. You aren't grabbed at all. Anyway. Uh, and Veo is not there, so... Okay. Alright. What are you guys gonna do? Um... Pluto, I can get us up those stairs. That's all I need to hear. Okay. Alrighty. Well, uh, in that case, uh, uh, that was... It is Sebastian's turn. Uh, I'm going to... run to the foot of the stairs... And I'm going to hold an action until Pluto gets here. Okay. And I'm going, when he gets here, I'm going to, um, where is it? Uh, Dimension Doris up to the top level, past the stairs. Okay, sounds good to me. Uh, with that, we go to Pluto's turn. I rush over um, and I lock arms with you. We lock arms. I lock both arms with you. Uh, yeah, we're facing each other. Holding we press our forward. foreheads together. And you bamf onto... And we bamf. Onto which... Only like oh. 15 feet. <laughs> yeah. Up. You ready? Here we go. And we bamf and just come up at the top of the stairs. Um, <laughs> right there. <laughs> yep. Can you see me? <laughs> up as well. Yeah. Okay, let's go. And we turn, and Veo's being pulled out the door by a tentacle. Right. Damn it! And, and I turn. yeah, and you see, and as you appear, you see Veo about to be devoured by another mouth. So I've only used my movement. So can I start swinging? Uh, yeah. Oh yeah, I start swinging. Veo, I'll save you. Um, <laughs> I get a twenty-five, an eighteen, and a thirty-one. All three. I just begin railing into the awful tentacle creature. Um, uh, 
I hope our boat's still there. Eighty nine damage. Okay. Just start hacking into it. Stop grabbing my friends. You do not have permission. Uh, Vale, it is your turn. Um, so I am grabbed. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm gonna use my last misty step. Get out of, get out of there. The tentacle. Um, and then shoot at it. Nice. Yep. Let's do this. Woo. Um, 23. To hit. Um. Forty-seven damage. It is destroyed. Yes. As that happens, the ship begins to shudder. And all of a sudden, the masts of the ship and the sails shake and writhe. And the masts of the ship themselves transform into tree trunk sized tongues. As a row of teeth forms on the railing all around the ship. And the ship begins to fold. Like the whole ship is going to collapse like one big closing mouth. (laughs) Guys, I can get us out of here. I mean, (laughs) do what you got to do. But like, are we still in initiative order? Sebastian, what are you going to do? Um, I plop my bag of holding down and you see Sebastian kind of disappear into his bag of holding just his little legs sticking up you hear like rifling like somebody throwing stuff off of shelves hurry up, and hurry up, yeah hurry, hurry up go. hurry up hurry up um and I come out with some bottles of wine and I toss one to Pluto and I toss one to Veo and I'm like guys drink up uh this I was just taking a glance in my inventory this is a throwback. All right, throwback. Four potions of gaseous form in the form of wine bottles stolen from the Queen of Thieves' lair. <laughs> so I, I, I go rifling through my bag and I toss each of you a bottle of wine. I'm like, guys, drink up. And I pop open a bottle like a of wine and start pouring it into my mouth. <laughs> He's like, bad grape juice. Woo! I feel weird. Okay, as you all turn into gas and flutter off the ship, you turn around in your gaseous forms as the ship turns into a giant mouth for one, like, almost like a massive shark jumping up out of the waves for one final bite. As whatever you had done to it, you see the... the floorboards and the wood collapsing and as it bites into itself it bites up again and then another mouth forms around it and bites again and bites again Mm -hmm. and bites again like it's devouring itself until it just collapses in on itself and disappears with a pop and that is where we'll take our break and we are back from our short rest. We have restocked on our consumables and we're going to play some more D&D. As you flutter away um, like, a, like a wafting on the wind, like a fragrant lingering odor. <laughs> <laughs> um, you see the shuddering remnants of the ill-fated finch from the the final pop as the ship almost devoured itself there is a light shower of splintered wood debris fabrics and 
the the spilling out from the final pop as if the contents of the ship the undigested remains of the ship f- f- um are dropped out of whatever extra dimensional space sucked in the creature that was created so it's almost like it reminds you for a moment Veo, of like when rope trick is dispelled yeah of like the the this raining matter that begins sinking into the bay among them several of the pieces of delirium as well as furniture from the ship uh and any goods that were not subsumed into the mass of what creature whatever creature the ill-fated finch became um noticeably not amongst the undevoured contents is the boat that you rented did we go get that no not among not among them oh not among them. your boat was absorbed back into the in in, in, yeah yeah um not getting your deposit back yeah sure. yeah that's okay we ended up getting like five thousand gold so just buy our own ship i guess and we'll call it the the well-fated sparrow crow oh, the fateful yeah. crow <laughs> the fateful crow um so as you flutter out uh, along the water flying in your gaseous forms Surveying the debris, where do you go? How long does this last? Ten minutes. Land? How far yeah. away from the land are we? Um, yeah, let's. Yeah, the with because the gaseous form only has a speed of ten feet, so it actually does take you, like getting back to land. You you kind of reassume your normal forms as you land back, uh, on, like on, on the docks. Yeah. Like we just make it. It takes us ten minutes to to float over. Yeah, to slowly waft, wafting, wafting. Like, and then, no. <laughs> yeah, we're all like, guys, move, move. As, but we're like, we can't communicate, so we're all thinking it as there's just these yeah. clouds slowly drifting over the water, like a fog on the water. Yeah. You know, yeah. I'm just following you, the the other clouds, and I yeah. I accidentally mistake another cloud for you guys, and then I Pluto <laughs> goes off course and follows some some actual sea fog for a few yeah. seconds, and yeah. it's like, oh. <laughs> uh, so yeah, we we land. And transform back. So as you all flutter in the same general direction, you land on the uh, <laughs> land, land on the shore. What do you do? Uh, so we need to find three apothecaries. Where do we start looking? Uh, um, is there like a a guild or something around here that? If I was it? an apothecary plotting to disrupt a. I don't know what these apothecaries even have to do with the Gasconade or the the meeting of people, but they were on board that ship. And if I was an apothecary, the first place I would go would be. And have we haven't taken our long rest yet? No, right? you haven't. No. Okay. What if no, I mean, yeah. it's it's what now a- getting into the early evening, um, and the the Gasconade is meant to be tomorrow. Uh, what if we put up a poster for Lost Book um, and we see if they come to us? Lost so we- Book filled with esoteric theories. That Those seem like words that an apothecary would yeah, use. Yeah. So, and then looking for owner found on docks. Yeah, if this is yours... Um, come get it back. No questions asked. But then here's the thing. When they get there, we have tons of questions. <laughs> they won't expect that. Yeah. I like the way you think. Or, or? you know, I like what Veo was saying. We go to the, we just start knocking on doors, uh, especially with apothecaries. Like, is that like, what uh what Oscar Yorin did? Is that like uh mm. a... No. 
maybe oh. like it's hard to be say a place that we could go that we could just find like a bunch of apothecaries and just start oh what fist and thumbs and if i was at sea for like a week the first place i would go when i'd land is a bath and a nap sebastian is there any um resources that the academy might have to find apothecaries are they even part of the academy uh they were part if of they, their own thing, yeah, right? Yeah. Could River find something if they, if you have something that that they that's theirs, or can you find something if if you have like an item that they have? He, maybe, maybe is River's around here, right? Uh, River is back at um uh it, it, you you could definitely get back in touch with River. You're not sure whether she would be back at the Enigma Ziggurat or whether she would be with the the procession that is that is at um the the consul's manor um but she was she was around yeah i mean are we doing this all nighter thing because i am feeling woozy no you're right we should probably turn in but we haven't caught the culprit yet and if the gas canade is tomorrow like I'm running out of steam. Even if we come across apothecaries, are we going to be able to do anything if they decide that? I mean, we'd be able to do something, but we're mm. right. We're running low on steam. I don't know. Well, you think the apothecaries, I guess, yeah, they would want to kill us if they're the ones who put explosive zombies in the basement of the cathedral. Then they would probably be looking for a fight. So far, our clues point to that. Something was going on on that ship. and Or at least where they got the the bodies, right? What time is the Gasconade tomorrow? Um, I think the, the Gasconade is probably something that would be held at, like, noon. Yeah, high but noon. Finishing a duel at high noon. Yeah. 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 So we yeah, do, yeah. we could go to sleep and wake up bright and early tomorrow morning and start looking right. for the apothecaries. It's not like they're leaving on their ship. Not on that ship, but. Okay, how about this? If we're going to go rest, why don't we get some ears out there? We send some errands. We talk to. You know, we pay some people to go find some information. Who do you know that's sleazy? Where's Blackjack Mel? Yeah, where's Blackjack Mel? He owes you. Did we already send him off on some information <laughs> finding? Um, yeah, I, I believe I you, you did. You, you were trying to see if Blackjack Mel... Uh, you had actually told Blackjack Mel to find out some information for you. Do you recall what that was? It was to find out who sent the mechanical guys Assassin. to assassinate the king mm -hmm. um i i do have one idea um i could have crowley be a lookout nobody suspects a crow so he would just be able to perch here on the docks and make sure people who don't look like apothecaries go wandering off on boats during the night okay why don't we do this why don't we drop some money with uh some locals like um the harbor master, um, a couple of lo local taverns. We mentioned we're looking for three people. I assume they dress the same. Is it like a cult thing? So, yeah. Uh, can we figure out like the name of their. Oh, the one time I didn't. Do they have like a, a weird tattoo that we can tip off? To? What, what's the book? Let's look at the book. Where's the Guild book? of Contentious Practice and Scientific Discovery of Altbrook Uni. Yeah, mm -hmm. maybe there's there's something in the book that leads us towards um, what they might look like, how they might dress, how they might act. Why don't we do all of these plans? Why don't we pay off some people to keep some eyes around the docks? We'll put Crowley up as a watch. We will put up a poster about a lost book and then we will go have a nap. I want to find like a young boy um no older than like 10 
plan. Now's not someday. the time for for uh, <laughs> you to find an apprentice, Pluto. <laughs> My squire. Your squire. I, I need a squire. Uh, hey, kid, <laughs> you want to go? Want to go see what a rat looks like? <laughs> Okay, so you're you're in the harbor where there are lots of people around, right? Yeah, like, so I want like, to approach <laughs> some like, like a, some kids playing, and I want to be like, boys. "Hey, you want to make some money?" Um, looking around the harbor, there's a huge number of porters that are moving goods from the harbor to the warehouses, and there are a fair number of young scallywags uh, romping about, um, uh, who will come down for for work. A fair number of people, as, as the day is starting to wind down at the harbor, a lot of people are heading off to the seedy taverns and pubs that are off the harbor district. Do we... Who's that guy that almost beat you up, Sebastian? Yeah. Oh, I'm um, Angry Bill. <laughs> angry or, Bill. That wasn't or it. it. No, it's Captain Angora, right? Yes, Captain yeah. Anger. Angora. Angora. It, hey, Angora. Can we I'm find just gonna, him? Angora, Captain Angora. I'm looking for a Captain Angora. Is you got into the trouble the first time? Is it yes. You telling the other <laughs> My name is Sebastian Crow, and I'm looking for a Captain Angora. Okay. Uh, um. Uh. It's uh, it, it was uh, Ang uh Angoron. Uh. To be actually. Angoron. Yeah. Captain Angoron. I'm yelling the wrong name. That's gonna make yeah. him really angry. Yeah. <laughs> um. <laughs> Uh, um, as you kind of look, look around, um, one of one of the the, the porters and and everyone says, "You'll uh, if you're looking for captains, most people are heading into the ta uh, in in to get some drinks drinks around th this time. Um, you'll uh, you'll want to stop by the salt side if you're looking for the captains. And is that the only tavern that?" Uh, people around her go to, or are there ones more for travelers? Uh, if anyone, well, any of the captains coming in on, on the docks, uh, says, says the man, a lot of them go up to, uh, up, up to salt sides because it's got some of the best grog, grog and, uh, the finest company, if you get my meaning. Uh, but, uh, you know, beyond, uh, be, beyond salt side, um, is, uh, is the winded sail. Um, you might find a few fo fo folk uh, over there, and between the winded sail and uh, salt side, you're gonna find about a, a dozen nameless watering holes that uh, that you can drown your sorrows in. Mm. I will not be drowning sorrows. I'm gonna keep it with me a little bit longer, but um, good to know that uh, we could probably find Angoron. At salt sides. Guys, shall we go there? Yeah, I think I'm ready to uh, get a few drinks um, with my one hit point, and I'm sure I have like blood everywhere and black eyes and bruises and look like a disheveled mess. Yeah, let's go. Yeah. yeah. Also, Veo, you should try drowning your sorrows sometimes. It's great. No, my sorrows make me stronger. Yeah. <laughs> oh, mine make me a lot weaker. Or they make me stronger. Maybe that's how. Anyway, we so, won't get into so yeah, the nuance of my the, magic. The, the two establishments. Um, essentially, there is a row of uh, taverns and drinking establishments that make their way in this in this rather seedy, narrow street that extends um, out from the the harbor area of Liberio, which really is the whole waterfront of, of the city. Um, but along the central area is not far from where the harbor master's offices are. There's an, an intersection of several streets off several canals that sort of form what what is regarded as like the porters and the sailors districts. So th this is an area where where the establishments here service ship crews that are coming to drink. So many of these places, um, as you as you wander the streets, Basically, um, you kind of come to the section where the there's a bit of a tiered setup to the streets, right? So there's um, the the a a street that stretches between two of the larger canals, and there is 
a low part to the street and a high part to the street where several arches are carved out. So there's like a lower walkway and an upper walkway that's kind of two bridges running parallel. And all along as you hit this street, you smell a combination of smells. Sweat and body odor, sea salt, alcohol, and various kinds of cooking from all over the world. Um, usually of, of uh, stews and um, salted meats and sandwiches. And so there's there's several places where basically a literal like hole in the wall in the street is a shop that is just slinging whatever food the whoever might live in that house owns, but they just open the doorways and it's this archway and a bunch of sailors are going up and they're getting fresh bread, some salted meat, maybe uh, maybe a bit of like um, fermented vegetables or like a like like that might be like a sauerkraut or a kimchi kind of equivalent and just scoop it up like a bowl of food, a thing of ale and people are drinking in the streets. Um, there's arguing, there's fighting, people are standing in line. And then several of these form basically really, really cramped hole in the wall drinking establishments. But you can see, and, and it's hard to tell like from the street, if they're separate little houses, like essentially where someone has just opened up a pair of double doors into what would be the equivalent of like the ground floor or the basement of their home and is just literally selling booze to whatever sailors they can right so so many of these places they don't have a proper name because you know you're you're just going to go down uh, down the, the 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 road to pietros and he, he's just going to serve you whatever he's whatever he's whipped up that day but anchoring either side of uh the 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 porters and the sailors uh, is the Winded Sail and the uh, the Winded Sail Tavern and the Salt Side Pub? Well, should we? Uh, what's 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 the strategy here? We're gonna go for a nap soon, but we should uh, hit up these pubs, I suppose. Just uh, ask around, see if anybody's heard anything, and let 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 people know that we're looking for some folk. Get a snack. Ask around. Get another snack. Ask around some more. And a few pints. There's a long line forming outside an establishment where uh, an elderly couple are making um, skewers of meat cubes with vegetables. And they smell amazing. Like whatever they're slathering them with, just the smell, like the spice slather that's going on on these skewers smells amazing. And you just see like the sailors, like just just big, huge sailor just takes the the skewer, just bites down and you see the juice like running down their beard of, 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 of the, of like the, the onion and the pepper and the meat all together. I'm in line, 100%. (laughs) And I like, as I'm waiting, I conjure up my mage hand (laughs) and I'm ready to take like three skewers and just keep (laughs) eating them as it goes. Well, Veo's lining up. I'm looking at it and I'm like, man, after all the mouths we just witnessed, I don't know if I have an app. Oh, Veo's gone. (laughs) 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 Um, So I guess what's the the nearest one is the... um, the, the salt side there's the salt side pub in the wind and sail tavern so uh, here's your final question gang before we head into the salt side do we look okay to head in there or do we need to look like captains or sailors is there any reason for a disguise <gasps> oh, oh so the I... s- go ahead, sir, go ahead. okay the salt side sa- tavern sits on the corner that starts this street Mm -hmm. it's a large building that has several balconies and the balconies are packed and the arches between the there's kind of this like arched porch right uh, of the sandstone building and it is shoulder to shoulder packed here the the tavern by by no see the salt side pub is not that that large but you can see that just inside past the crowds there's a cask of ale uh, there, there's several casks of ale where the where the booze and the meat is flowing, and you can smell the wood smoke from the oven that is making flatbreads 
to serve that that are covered with like a, a melted cheese or like a tomato sauce and just whatever the sailors might bring to put on their flat their their flatbreads. Um, yeah. If we need if we need to dress up, we can dress up. I dress up. Can I get one of those flatbreads? The the people that are in here are all sailor. Like, there's definitely no dress code in 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 here. Oh, okay. Yeah. The, the, but do we look? Do we look out of place? There's no in place to be here. The, okay. Be, because because this street is where the sailors go. It is an eclectic mix of humanity. You are seeing all manner of people walking down this street, of um, probably from all manner of f- places near and far. Um, there really is no such thing as the typical citizen of Liberio, because it is such an international city that people from all over the world are here, and even someone that might say that they are from Liberio, their ancestry is probably... The, the, the mix of ancestries and peoples that dwell in Liberio means that there really isn't any standard. There might be the fashions of Liberio, but even those are incredibly diverse. So the notion of, uh, so the notion of, of fitting in, especially here where you're dealing with crews of ships from like you can see amongst the crowd here there are definitely caspians there are people from westamar there are, there but there are even and people from illyria but there are even people from more fa- far flung places like orleone and Turin, um and possibly even people that have come from from far the lands on, on the far continent uh, are are intermingled here because they're all ships crews okay no need for knife gut pete to make an appearance then let's uh, let's head in uh, Pluto, what what are we gonna tell people? Okay, so I think the plan is um, we approach the staff. They have their eyes open and their wits mm. about them. We let mm. them know what we're looking for. We drop the money and we say, "Don't tip off that we're doing that." But there'll be more money. And then send like a runner. I mean, like that's why I wanted to involve the children because they love running for money. So you pay someone, and you're like, "Look, you kid, tell me when so and so gets to what's its place." And they're like, "Cool." And you're like, "Here's a silver to uh, the console Ezio's because we will probably be there, right?" Yeah. Yeah. Never. Also, we could come by tomorrow morning and just ask if what what they heard. But if they do hear anything in the night, should they send somebody to us? I think so. Yeah. Okay. Um, we'll sleep through it, but we we just we, we want to know. Yeah, Veo, you're on uh, wake up duty if somebody comes a knocking. Oh. Uh, I I approach the barkeep and I place mm. three gold on the table. The the barkeep is a, a man with a frilled shirt and a and a um a burgundy vest, and he has a thick mustache and long flowing hair, um oh. that is, that is jet black, um and and kind of that that's sort of like hooked to nose, uh and and he says, "Welcome to uh to the Saltside Pub. How can Fernando help you?" Well, Fernando, my name is Sebastian Crow, and I'm looking for some people. Now, I'm going to just leave this gold here. You'll have to speak up, Sebastian Crow. It is very loud in here. I am looking for some people. I am going to inconspicuously leave gold on this table and give you a description. The, uh, um... Fernando says, My friend, do you see how busy my establishment is? I am looking for three apothecaries. They came in from the ill-fated Finch. The the man looks at looks at the gold, looks at you, looks at he he looks out at at, at uh, and as you say this, another person bar- barges by and says, Oh 
out of my way, scrawny mage. Fernando, another ale. Is that you, Captain Angry? Uh, um, it, 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 it is, it is not. Um, it is just oh. a, 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 um, and, and Fer Fernando says, I'm sorry, my friend, but if, if you're, this, this is generous, but I have many people to help today. Uh, I slam three more gold on the, on the counter. Ah, perhaps I wasn't clear. I have many people to serve tonight. Look at the crowd this evening. I begin to he scan looks, he the He looks crowd. at the gold back at you, looks at the people. Um, I, lo I start looking around the establishment for <laughs> I something. I grab Sebastian. This isn't going anywhere. We should get out of here. <laughs> no, this is going what a somewhere. a waste of time. No, d hold on. Hold on. We're making somewhere. He's speaking in code. And trust me, I'm a smart guy. I can figure this out. Here's three more gold. <laughs> he, he says, if you're looking to buy information, you need to add some zeros on the end that you're offering, my friend. Gold? How much? How much do you get paid? What? This is... Oh man, okay, um... I might have the information that you're looking for. You have asked about some very particular individuals. Particular inf individuals with particular proclivities. Particular proclivities that can be... A, shall we say, a liability for a man in business such as myself. You understand. I see what you're saying. Add a zero. We got it. I put one more gold down. Now we're at ten. There you go. One zero. Get out of my bar. I could burn your bar to the ground. Okay, if what my friend whoa, whoa, is whoa. trying to say. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. Bayo and I interject as we hear the burn this place to the ground. <laughs> I, there's like a fire in Sebastian's eyes, and it's like ten <laughs> gold is quite a bit of. As he's being like pulled off, I could. How about this? I take a hundred gold in a pouch, and I say, "How much pizzas will this buy?" Pizza. I mean, flatbreads. Give me a persuasion check. Oh, oh, actually, I'm okay with that. Oh, that's the wrong type of die. Hold on. Oh, uh, 25. Oh, no, no, Tw uh, 27. Ooh. Ah, see, your friend here understands food. That can buy many pizzas. But I think that for a party such as yours, you might need to buy a few more. Do you understand? This, this guy's scamming us. Like maybe two more? Two more pizzas? Yes. How much do yeah. people pay for information here? This is just a seedy establishment. We're paying your entire rent for a year. I put down one more pouch with 200 gold in it. Very well. Bernita, take the floor. Come with me, friends. Ugh. Guys, I'm so excited for these flatbreads. You just spent all of our money on flatbreads. We need information. All our money? We have a lot of money now. Yeah, that's actually not even close to how much money we have. Oh, Remember, by the we way, found like 5,000 Fernando we totally raided Drakenheim. <laughs> Fernando leads you to uh, leads you back into the kitchen um, where the smell of salt and bread is overpowering and you can smell that yeasty concoction, uh, and, and the olive oil and the, the olive oils. And he says, your friend is a bit of a fool, isn't he? Oh, you mean Pluto? <laughs> yeah. Oh, he, he <laughs> takes the gold. You are looking for some individuals. Yes, you said. Uh, yeah, creepy. Um, they're probably uh, doing uh, cult stuff. Um, might have an interest in dead people. Came on a ship recently. Um, 
Guild of Conscious Practice and Scientific Discovery of Altberg University. Have you heard it? They're apothecaries. They probably look like weird. Yeah. I uh, I can tell you that the these people that you're looking for from this Altbrook University, I have seen them come through this way, and I've I haven't seen them myself, but I've heard of several sailors talking about how much these apothecaries pay for transportation or for ships. And I heard a few rumors a while back uh, about another, uh, about, well, another missing ship far up north. People were talking all about it. They said that uh, it was a ship that was run by the Amethyst Academy. A crew had been hired and also gone missing. These, uh, These people have been not very safe. They've got a bad reputation. People won't work with them anymore. So so you're telling me two times three apothecaries have gotten on a ship and the entire crew went missing. I have not seen any of these apothecaries, but uh, but I have heard people call call you know doctors, these apothecaries, but this guild that you talk about from Altbrook University. Yes, there there have been a several ships crews working for them lately. Not the, but the the last one that I that I knew of was the ill-fated Finch. And so they're here right now in Liberio, or so the rumors suggest. That I cannot say for for certain. I know that they have booked passage. I, I assume that I've heard crews saying that they've they've had them in their as passengers a couple times before but uh but they seem to be uh the the type that pay a lot but don't want to want any questions asked and the sailors often complain about them well so far for the uh several hundred gold that we've given you you've told us that there are three apothecaries that came in on the ship that we know they came in on and that they are maybe here, maybe not, and that people are talking about them and that they pay a lot of money. For the amount that we just gave you, you better have something substantial to tell us. Well, all all I can, uh, all I can tell you is really there's, um, well, the only one that you might want to follow up on you might, uh, might want to be a little bit uh, careful because I can tell you, you know, who else might have owned that ship, who else might have had a part in uh, in buying and selling around that ship. Would that be useful to you? Yeah, I can help. Okay, okay. So that ship is a Westermar ship from Dransmond, right? Yeah. Well, the thing that I happen to know about it is that um, the another several of the, the households here in Liberio have shares in that ship. They might be able to tell you more of where it come from or more of its business. Uh, House Leontes deals quite extensively with uh, with these, and they could be a lead for you. I am sorry that I don't have much more for you on, on this, but or, or on where these apothecaries might have gone. As I said, I haven't seen them myself. Right? But I've just heard that that ships have been booking passage with, with, with these, and if you wanted... If it was up, uh, up to me... Seems to me that if you want to get to the bottom of it, of it, you're in the wrong city. We're in the wrong city. We we need to sort this out by noon tomorrow. There's a there was an attempted attack 
and the city is in danger and there are many important people in the city right now who are also in danger we're trying to protect this city and protect the people in it from an inevitable attack so far the clues have led us back to these apothecaries we don't have the time to go looking in dransmond or another city mm. to find out where they are and what they're plotting i say you know it takes it takes time for, for things to be done. Maybe, you know, these people that you're looking for, they, they, I don't know. I don't, I, I'm, I'm sorry. That's, that's all I know, but, but which city, that's the price of information here. What city was, should we back in Westmar? You think? I mean, these apothecaries, they came from Altbrook. Okay. So Altbrook now, we appreciate the information you've given us so far, but since these apothecaries are likely in the city and potentially doing some harm to the sailors that frequent even your bar, if you hear anything, will you send word to uh, to um, con the consul Is Isabella Etzios? Mm. If you're working with the consul, maybe you should report this to her. Definitely an option. I'm just thinking that sometimes, you know, there are, like you said, mm. whisperings that you'll only hear in, in places like this where sailors will tell their stories. Well, it, it, it's true, but uh, if you have the ear of the consul, there is very little that happens in Liberio that she doesn't have at least some tabs on. Maybe mm. uh, you... Uh, Maybe you have given me a very gener generous donation for information that you might have been able to get better from her. I appreciate it, but uh, wait, wait, we could have talked to her the whole. Can time. you at, can you at least throw in three pizzas? Sure. Yes. Thank you. And to go. I'm gonna eat three pizzas. I'll wrap them up for you. Oh, sorry. Hey, did you, you get guys all want three some of them? too? <laughs> you just paid like six hundred gold for three pizzas and nothing. What? Admittedly, admittedly, the flat, admittedly, the flatbreads are amazing. I don't know how much did we pay. Three hundred. Oh, three hundred! I doubled it. Yeah, three hundred gold's found, a lot of gold. But we found five thousand on the ship. Yeah, that guy was totally a swindler, though. I say as I'm like leaving with my delicious flatbread pizza. Um, it was worth every how penny. How much HP do you get now. back from uh, a flatbread pizza? I will. I will burn that part of the ground you. if that guy if that guy <laughs> tries to take 300 gold from me ever again. Information is is worth whatever value you put on it. And I think the only least, information he told us is to leave the city to find out what we want or talk to the person we're staying with. That's he what he told us. He discovered the whole thing after no, he, he found us. out who we where we were staying. So like, Leontes, Leontes. What if we just never brought it up to the consulate? Like we could have just went home and been like, we're going to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> any, Fine. Any news? I, don't know. Fine. I also oh, knowing that know that if we talk to her, if she says she doesn't know. Could she be covering things up? And then we so burn her stuff. house to the ground. No! <laughs> Show Get the wine her. out first. It shouldn't be the first mm. thing that you think of. <laughs> what would you guys like to do next, then? <laughs> uh, shall we go back to her house and ask yeah. her? Sure. 300 gold later. <laughs> All right. 300 gold later. 300 gold and bellies full of flatbread later. Um, it, it's, it isn't really correct to call... Like, I know we're using pizza as a shorthand, but like... like I'm imagining that this is like the proto pizza, you know, yeah. you know, you know what I mean? Like, you know, like, like I, I imagine that it would have figured like it would have t taken people a while to figure like, I mean, I guess tomato sauce, because what I understand, like it, it's it's more about like the the sauce than the cheese, like in the history of pizza, like the the yeah, like so it's like more like more like a fra like a flatbread or a bruschetta, like not a bruschetta, but like I imagine it's like like a chunky, like chunky tomato on, on top with like a sprinkling of like cheese and also like whatever your dough technique i yeah. already had dinner tonight and i i want to order a pizza it's when been a while here. since i've had pizza too so that might yeah, just be I, it I'm, yeah i've been missing pizza yeah yeah mm. okay yeah. well i guess 300 gold for this pizza worth it let's let's go back to the to the house yeah you can at least get an idea of of 
where you know where maybe to look like she might point us in the right direction um but yeah if she maybe has tabs like if these are known um what vandals and they've already made a name for themselves as being difficult to work with uh it seems like they've probably got some people that are after them as well and i'm sure mm. they've made some enemies so like us I have some tea <laughs> on the liantes too yeah, yeah. You head back to the villa of Consul Isabella Ezio. Um, again, it is a, 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 a respectable estate where the the leader of uh, Liberio is. And of course, the, the home now is under heavy guard. Um, so not only have the, the forces of Liberio themselves and the, and the, the, um, the, armed soldiers from the barrio now been positioned more heavily because the news has spread about what has happened at the cathedral right and even as you come in uh isabella Ezio says where have you all been um the the i got the news from the flame keeper at the cathedral of saint uh, of saint, at saint fiona about what you found this is a disaster what happened I mean, it seems like some trouble was brewing under the cathedral before we even came so yeah glad we found that for you we've been investigating first on behalf of liberio i want to apologize profusely mm -hmm. this oversight on behalf uh, on the high flame keepers part is a grave diplomatic peril to Liberio itself. I don't want to imagine what would have happened if whatever these conspirators were planning had occurred. But it could have been the death knell for Liberio itself. If the leaders of Caspia, Westamar, and Illyria had been attacked, let alone killed, while they were in my city, we would have taken the blame for it and we would have been destroyed you know there is uh there is something to say for the fact that although the gasconade tomorrow is supposed to be about the monsters that were hunted the fact that we three stopped an attempt to assassinate many important world leaders at a public event or a private event, I guess, um, could probably be put in the books as points for us. And Liberio itself, if they have any stakes in this, should probably keep in mind that this mistake was made and that the three of us have uh, done what we do best and helped out. Have you found who is responsible or do you have any information on where they came from? Uh, we've got it all figured out, but we have some questions to just confirm what we already assume. Very well. I want you to know that I take this very seriously, and I can put whatever resources you might need, whatever aid you might need, to get to the bottom of this at your disposal. Mm, probably a few more bottles of wine. Yeah, I'm pretty sure we should have come to you first. So How will more wine help? Uh, wine saved our lives tonight, for the record. Yeah, he's, he's wrong, weirdly actually. accurate on that statement. <laughs> Very well. You do look grievously wounded, and you smell of sea salt and the harbor. Oh, I am. I'm bleeding right now inside of this cloak, but we're going to deal with that later. That's so, a, that's a later. We, we've discovered, after asking around and finding some things, that... Um, the Guild of Conscious Practice and Scientific Discovery of Altbrook Uni um, may have three guys, three apothecaries so. wandering around potentially um, turning people into zombies slash undead. Yeah, the the what we found under the. The temple was um, uh, uh, these sailors that had been injected or uh, 
changed into almost like these walking bombs that would explode, um, sending this awful bile and 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 internal grossness all over the place. And it would yes, burn. indeed. I I learned about that from uh, the um, Fla High Flame Keeper Portia. Let me know that that was happening. The consul has a grave look on her face. She furrows her brow a little bit as she thinks about it. <sighs> I must tell you, I'm not a particularly devout person myself. And so it's not surprising that the flame keepers did not check the crypts. I have since ordered my soldiers and soldiers of Liberio to close off the area around the cathedral. We have closed off more streets and we have thoroughly, we're, I've ordered a thorough sweep of the underground and the catacombs as well on my part to make sure that there's no other threats that are hiding in the, in the darkness. Of course, my people don't have the capabilities that you three do, but I hope that if there is any other plan or plot that is going to bubble up, whatever, whatever they were planning on doing, it seems clear to me that they were planning on detonating this bomb or attacking the Gascony directly. And by your actions, you have foiled them. Do you think that they will attempt something again? I mean, regardless of whether or not they will attempt something again, it still benefits us. We don't know why they did this or who they were working for. or And that, that's all valuable information that we could use. So their boat is gone. They have no way out of Liberio until they hire another captain to take them offshore or leave. So we need to keep our finger, our fingers, no, our ears to the ground. I've, I've already ordered the harbor master to close the port. No ships will be leaving Liberio. Well, keep in mind that we also got to be careful about cornering them too quickly as well. Of course, I don't want them to get out, but. Who knows what they'll do when they're trapped. Yes, if they can turn an entire ship into a monster and turn monsters into monsters and people into monsters. I... I do think that the three of us will need a nappy nap for the night. Which... It would be bad if we spring them into a defensive position during that time, but have you heard anything around the streets of Liberio that, um, about these three apothecaries? Because we would hope to act and bring them in for questioning before the Gasconade tomorrow at noon. I can have my eyes and ears and my, and the soldiers of Liberio if there is anyone from the guild of conscious conscious what is this guild called again conscious practice and scientific discovery of alpercune if we find any of them we will bring them in and apprehend them i will send my people to every inn tavern flop house and boarding house knock seeing if anyone is staying in any establishment if there's anyone fitting any of this description i will have them brought in and imprisoned in anger citadel until we can question them what do you know about house Leonte. House Leontes is one of our most powerful and respected houses in, in Liberio. The, um, the Duke Bernardo is a, well, he's a friend of mine, but I would say, I'm not sure if he necessarily views both of us as a friend. He has a hand in almost every business transaction in the city. Um, and they are the most prolific money lenders in the city. Most notably, 
um, Duke Bernardo's um, largest client is selling insurance to sailors when they go on a voyage. So a sailor who goes on a voyage, if uh, they happen to not return home, or if another one, an another business person commissions a ship, and that ship should be lost at sea, Bernardo sells the insurance based on that, and he's made himself a pretty penny selling that, those policies. Um, and so generally, that that is that is his 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 deal. Um, you know, there are are some that say. Uh, um, that say that uh, he is very good at sniffing out a doomed vessel and knowing when not to insure it. Hmm. Huh. Well, there's a chance that Duke Bernardo is in on this as they came in on the ill-fated Finch, which is a ship that he has invested in. Hmm. So uh, that was a poor investment. And in the future, I would probably not invest in ships that start their name with ill-fated. Well, yeah, they it might be have been a. Uh, sorry. I was going to say it should be more fireproof. <laughs> well, there are some interesting strategies that Duke Bernardo has been rumored to employ, um, such as, well, sometimes there are some who have complained that, well, if a sailor buys themselves insurance. Who makes the claim? Their mm -hmm. family. And there have been some complaints that I've heard that Bernardo has sold an insurance policy to a sailor and their vessel's gone down and that sailor's family hasn't been able to get their claim. Hmm. But also, the ship may have gone down. But who says he didn't make any money? I think... Who knows what kind of business he's actually in if he's working with these apothecaries. It might have been a potentially successful endeavor if he's looking to invest in what they're doing. And would Duke Bernardo have any reason to uh, pay apothecaries to sabotage tomorrow's meeting? What kind of profit is in it for Duke Bernardo? Might be a little bit of a... Uh, um, he might be... A victim in this rather mm. than a perpetrator could be but if there's trouble happening and liberio gets blamed who knows what kind of trouble is going to come and there's mm. always profit in war indeed there if is his name, if his name is on there we i mean i don't know if we need to go as far as imprisoning him like the apothecaries but I think at least going and having a conversation and figuring out what he knows, like why is his name on freeze his assets. Uh, manifest. We, I, I can't do that. I'm so, I'm sorry, Ber Bernardo. We don't. Liberio, Bernardo is the banks. We don't have the power. He runs the many of the banks in Liberio. He's the one with the power to freeze other people's assets. We can't possibly do that. That is, that is beyond what, what we have the power to do. Well, it sounds like tomorrow, first thing in the morning, we're going to see if we can bring in any of the apothecaries, and we're going to have to go have a chat with Duke Bernardo about his stakes in all of this. Uh, do we have any other clues or any other hints, or is that everything we have right now? What I don't understand is what... Why travel so far? What do they do they want? If these are apothecaries ostensibly from the guild, why? Who sent like what is their motivation? What would they have wanted? Well, we've we've had run-ins with assassins before, especially against the future King Wilhelm. Hmm. So there's a good chance that, like it was said, the, these apothecaries may be working for someone else. They might be simply pawns uh, in a bigger scheme and for the right price and the, the right, I guess, motivation. People can be pushed to do things, so they might be 
part of something bigger. Hmm. It, it could be another reason why we just can't. We need to find them and talk to them. We won't know much more until we apprehend them or figure and out more And if we can't get them by morning, I guess we go talk to this duke and see if he can explain his way uh, as to why he's working with such shady individuals who already have a pretty bad reputation. At this point, I think that we've done a pretty good job of securing the cathedral, but the perpetrators are still on the loose, and that's what's concerning. And we don't yet know their motives behind this. We assumed that this attack was by one of our known enemies, but these apothecaries are new players in this. And we don't yet know why they wanted to destroy this meeting. Mm -hmm. What does this meeting represent? If Westermar wins, then they, then Illyria may back Wilhelm as king. So perhaps Altbrook might not want Wilhelm to be king. But at the same time, the Silver Order could, could win. Do we remember, uh, I know that Engelhart is the, um, the head of Altbrook. Where did they fit on the love or hate Wilhelm scale? Um, Altbrook sided with Wilhelm's parents, Wilhelm's father, during the Civil War. Um, but Altbrook was also the city that bore the brunt of of like if altbrook was the most besieged city um of the war um mm. and so it suffered very heavily um and paid a pretty heavy price uh over the course of the civil, civil war itself maybe Maybe they're unhappy with the way it went and don't want another Von Kessel in power. Even if they did side with the Von Kessels during the war, they might be bitter about how that went. There's a chance. We won't know for sure. This is all guessing. Hmm. But... I mean... Should we sleep on it? Sleep is when I do my best thinking or screaming depends on the <laughs> dreams you've talked to you. all right well if you all want to take a long rest and see how things go in the morning i think that that might be a, an appropriate place for us to end for the night <laughs> guys i also think thinking back was that the first apology we've ever had <laughs> Somebody said that they were wrong and we did a good job and we wow. saved a city. We saved a city? How many episodes did that take? <laughs> we 13. saved a city, guys. That's the first time someone was like, we messed up. Like, I was Wait, like, no, no, no. Whoa. I'm sure we were the ones that messed up. So <laughs> bad. Before we go to bed, would, would you just <laughs> confirm again that we're, would you say we're heroes? Heroes? Would Absolutely. Not only have you secure, have you insured, as I said, you three, had this gone unnoticed, had you not discovered this, it would have been a disaster tomorrow. I agree. So, so heroes of Drakenheim, Drakenforce, the heroes, the heroic crows, the three heroes crows the, the jackson the, the the jackson's heroes you you three have done a great thing for liberio and i will not forget that and i want you to know that despite our earlier misgivings i'm very impressed with what you did i think that this is a grave scenario and i want to get to the bottom of it but i need to know before you wrap up if you 
shall I send word to your compatriots, and do you feel that you should go ahead with this Gasconade tomorrow? Or do you think I mean, that, that... Because all these pieces are here, but it, it, if... I, I, I must say, in my opinion, if you have enemies, you have thwarted them. And if you delay, you might give them an oppor a greater opportunity to recuperate and strike again. I agree. I no, think the totally Gasconade goes on. It, it, we power through. We do not. Because, number one, yeah, we push them back, whatever plans they've had. Number two, it, there's just more of us. Like, we, we you know, mm. we've worked with some of these, these other, this other crew, and they're very capable. I must uh, confess, for this reason... Whatever these plotters and conspirators were planning, it's entirely possible that they might have already left Liberio. They left undead creatures and monsters rather than carrying it out themselves. And and by the and they clearly had no intention of negotiating or or of any kind. Perhaps in, they 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 were planning on destroying the Cathedral of Saint Fiona. So. So it's entirely possible that they they've already left. But mm. but nevertheless, I put the city on lockdown. No one will leave and no one will enter aside from your delegations until the Gasconade is completed. It will not be popular with the people there will be a lot of anger about this, but it is necessary at the stage because that alone will hopefully prevent any other incidents. Hopefully. And if there's one thing I'm good at, it's preventing incidents. No, that's actually the opposite. Of Pluto, shh. Shh. <laughs> it's just that um, so many times you say, like, shh. It's just that she probably wants to know. No. <laughs> We're heroes, Pluto. We're heroes. Yeah. I do like Get that. some I rest. Do like <laughs> Give me the night. I will find if there is anybody who knows anything in this city about who was responsible. I will have my people on it all through the night, and if there's any members of this guild that are here in the city, I will apprehend them, and I will have them for you as soon as I can in the morning. All right. Friends, Good night. it's time for a cuddle puddle. Good night, heroes. Thank you, heroes. For all heroes. Right. Can we just like stay up and talk about how we're heroes and like lay in bed together and be like, guys, remember when we were told we were heroes? What what's what heroic thing have you done recently, Pluto? Sebastian, you threw a fireball randomly in a ship and it blew up. Did you see how much fire was there? It was That's great. it was so cool. And then we turned into gas and flew away. And then I saw you get thrown by water and it looked like you were dead. Like your soul like left your body, but then you just like we're fine. That's because I don't even have a soul. And Veo. I'm sorry for judging us. What did that happen? Veo, you fought so many staircases and lived. Yeah. Yeah. And Pluto, you chopped so many tentacles off. I, I'm so proud coming, of you. And I just yeah. attacked them. And they just kept coming. And you guys are so cool. You're so cool. I should get her to write a letter of recommendation to Wilhelm just to tell her like what a good job we've done. <laughs> that would go well. That would go yeah. well. Yeah. He won't believe us if we tell him. No. We got to get her to repeat like the hero stuff at like yeah. a big dinner, like when everyone's listening. At I, the when, Gasconade. At the Gasconade, I think that we should just stand up and be like, we are heroes <gasps> and tell everybody this cool story. Does They'll love it. We can have a hero's feast. Oh. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All righty. Well, that is where we're going to end for the night. A big thank you to Kelly, Jill, and Joe, our amazing cast of players, for playing tonight. And a big thank you to Kyle, who I saw popped into chat um, eventually there and wondered what he had missed. Kyle, you missed a little bit, but you made it, and we're yeah. happy that you're here, and we love you. Uh, Kyle does a lot of our work behind the scenes uh, to keep everything organized and get these videos up on YouTube, so thank you, Kyle. And also, a big thank you to our Dungeon Master, Monty Martin, uh, for running the Mimic Ship yeah. and uh, the continued political intrigue um espionage uh 
uh, conspirators and all of the other weaving threads that make up this wonderful plot. Uh, thank you, Monty. And, uh, and, and thank you to all the amazing creators that provide some incredible assets that we use in our stream games. Um, they've graciously given us permission to use them in our stream games. And we hope you can go out and support some of these amazing creators and use them in your games too. Um, I think the maps today were also created by Monty. Uh, uh, the maps today were actually um, part of an amazing uh, pack on Roll20 um, by uh, one of the, the same folks that makes a bunch of the uh, spell effects tokens and stuff that we use. Um, I think I will just double check there uh for us um but uh yeah the they're they're pretty awesome ship assets that are on the roll 20 yeah they looked really good yeah and the different levels um some great tokens um and some of the i think some of the tokens you guys use the artwork from the dungeons of drakenheim yes and the official um, uh the official token sets as well right awesome take a look at below for uh, the links uh, for our Teespring store. You can find all of your favorite Dungeon Dudes shirts, uh, including some of the classics. Check it out at bit.ly slash Dungeon Dudes merch. Yeah, the just to just conf- confirm, the, the really cool ship maps that we used were, were by Gabriel Picard. Um, and right. th- those are actually on the Roll20 marketplace. Uh, there, there, there's some really slick, like multi-level ship maps. So if you want to use those in your own games, check those out. Thanks to uh, thanks to Gabriel for for nice. put, for making those. Yeah, and um, for our part, um, oh my God, where 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 are we on 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 this outro thing here? <laughs> After me. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. Um, our videos are, and live streams are made possible because we have an amazing Patreon community. A massive thank you to all of our patrons for making our work that we do here on Twitch and YouTube and elsewhere possible. We couldn't do it without you. So if you enjoy our work, please consider joining our Patreon. Check us out at patreon.com/slash dungeon underscore dudes. The links are down below. And we also have a Discord community exclusive for our patrons. So if you are joining us on Patreon, you can hop on our Discord. You can chat with all of us about anything to do with D&D, Drakenheim, or a bunch of other topics. Also, if you join our Discord, you get access to our monthly writer's rooms where you can chill with Monty and I while we work on upcoming scripts and projects. And you can also get your questions submitted for our monthly Q&As. And you can get your... um, your uh, homebrew material submitted to us whenever we do one of our homebrew workshops. All of that is uh, part of our Patreon. Yeah, and speaking of other cool stuff that we're going to be doing, um, next week um, we are going to PAX. Uh, So Kelly and I and Jill will be there. Joe, uh, unfortunately, will not be joining us this this time. Uh, But uh, we uh, are going to be having a meet and greet on Friday afternoon if you are going to PAX Unplugged. uh, So check the schedule. That will be happening. And we are also going to be doing a panel on Saturday, December 3rd at 5.30 p.m. Eastern. That panel will be live streamed uh, onto the PAX Unplugged, uh, the PAX... uh, uh, Twitch stream, so you'll be able to catch it there, um, and then we'll check. We've, I've still got to check with Pax and see if we can upload that to our own channel. But we will be doing uh, our panel on uh, creating content for D and D and meeting with all those people. So if you are coming to Pax, uh, check us out uh, at those events. They're all in the Pax schedule, uh, and we'll be also checking the Expo Hall as well. Um, and uh, we'd love to to meet you if you're going to be there. Uh, so Ooh. check out uh, all yeah. those things. Make sure to bring your copy of Drakenheim if you have it or anything else that you feel like getting us to sign. We are open to signing things, taking pictures, high fives, fist bumps, whatever. Come on over and say hi. If you see us, don't be shy. Come say hello. We love it. We're excited to meet you all. So please don't hesitate to say hello. Also, um, be sure to join us next Tuesday when we record the campaign live on Twitch. You can check us out from 7 p.m. to 10 p.m. Eastern time at twitch.tv slash dungeon underscore dudes. You can also watch the video episodes of the show on YouTube and check us out as an audio only podcast as well. Thank you so much for watching and we will see you next time as we decide the fate of Drakenheim.